Hey guys, I'm Andre. I'm Wilson. I'm Tristan. This is ATV. We're going to be reacting to another death battle. Oh yeah. This time it's going to be Samurai Jack versus Afro Samurai. Hey, yeah. Um, I don't know much about Afro Samurai. I didn't watch that series. Yeah. I know a lot about Samurai Jack. Same here. Especially the new uh, season. Well, it's not really new now. It came, I think, maybe two or three years ago now. The whole the season that came out. It came out last. 2017. Yeah, a year ago. I'm pretty sure we reset my guy. But yeah, uh, <laughs> well, I know we, we watched that. We didn't watch that on the channel because the channel wasn't up yet. A lot, a few people did though. I don't know who the <laughs> song did. But yeah, Samurai Jack versus futuristic things and stuff because he's a samurai gets thrown into the future 50 years, I think. Mm. Or more, I think. I don't know. And uh, that, and Afro Samurai, I don't know much uh, other than how, how he looks. But in this, uh, in this episode, we're gonna find out more about Afro Samurai because we don't know. Yeah, honestly, it. they're just both of them are. Uh, they're not very extraordinary. Yeah. It's just. They're kind of, they could both kind of just regular samurai, really. And one fights robots. And I don't actually know what Afro Samurai fights, if he's like in some weird mutant thing or something. Or also like in a futuristic setting. Or if he just fights at other people. Let's just so, get right into it. Let's just get into yeah. it. More explain. Among the soldiers of history, the samurai is one of the most prestigious and dangerous. So let's pit two of the best of them in a fight to the death. Samurai Jack, the warrior prince lost in time. And Afro Samurai, who's one cold-blooded mother ever. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Long ago, yes. in a distant land, Maku, the shape-shifting master of darkness, unleashed an unspeakable evil. But a foolish samurai warrior wielding a magic sword stepped forth to oppose me. I, I mean him. <laughs> and that nameless samurai became known as... Jack. Jack. Jack was out. Jack. Jack. Which isn't even Yo, his real Jack, name. Jack, was... Jack. 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 Doesn't really strike fear into your enemies. Young Jack was the son of a Japanese emperor who had yeah, imprisoned Aku years reveal. before. However, upon Aku's return, the emperor and his army were quickly defeated. The last of all hope remained in the hands of his son. Oh, look how small he is! <clears throat> well, uh, to prep for beating the snot out of Aku, okay, little Jack traveled the world, training with the best of the best. Gotta get back to the path. He learned horseback riding from a shape, snap uh. fighting in Africa, wrestling from gladiators, Axe throwing from a Russian boyar, mounted combat from the Mongols, martial arts from Shaolin monks, and, and archery from freaking Robin Hood! You know, Damn. everyone's favorite talking fox, Uda Lolly! <laughs> Long Robin Hood. That's yeah. your opinion. Jack's progress was exceptional. At just eight years old, he defended a whole village from a band of marauders. All before he could even legally drink the good stuff! Seventeen years later, he was ready for the final boss. He just needed one more thing. His pajamas. No, no, no. His katana. Katana, pajama, tomato, He's trying. It's all the same. But before Jack could put his training to good use, Aku pulled a bitch move and zapped him hundreds of years into the future. <laughs> what a waste. Just like when you spend four sleepless years struggling through college and then find out too late that nobody cares about your English major. <laughs> you graduated from the school of evil science or something. Well, you still have to pick a major. Should have chosen a more practical one, Wiz, like mine. Anyway, Boomstick. even though he was trapped in the future, Jack stuck to his mission to get back to the past and take down Aku. And he had the right weapon for the job. See, Aku cannot be harmed by conventional means. Is this from the new Thus, season? a special blade was forged oh, by gods from Norse, Egyptian, and Hindu pantheons. 
this mystic sword is nearly unbreakable and absolutely incorruptible. And boy, is Jack's Katana an extremely effective weapon. It can absorb and redirect energy, including fire, vaporize beings of evil, and slice through nearly any substance, even adamantium. The Wolverine Super Metal? Why is that there? Uh, probably just coincidental naming, but it is shown to be stronger than steel. Of course it is. No, the sword's pretty awesome, but so is Jack. He's strong enough to push over this giant pillar, tough enough to survive a fall from orbit, and fast <laughs> enough to defeat six bounty hunters in the time it took for one drop of water to hit the ground. Dang, By timing awesome. the drop, all oh, this had to have taken place in about one third of a second. He's like a ninja samurai. Ninja Marai. Actually, he is trained in ninjutsu, which probably helped when he was forced to dodge beams of sunlight. For this one in particular, it's clear Jack began dodging after the beam was fired. By examining both Jack and the beam's movement frame by frame, we've concluded his highest reaction speeds must be nearly 70% the speed of light. Damn, that's fast. Hey, <laughs> what? Next thing you'll tell me, he has uh, the power to fly or something. Well, Jack can't fly, he but jump he hard. did learn how to jump hard. Man, really uh, hard. Yes, that. By strapping yeah. a giant boulder on his back, which compared to his height we can determine to weigh 39 tons, <laughs> Jack learned how to leap high enough to clear these trees. Whoa. Crouching tiger hidden samurai! These trees are pretty big, and this jungle has a bunch of these ugly baboons running around, and if I were a betting man, which I am, I'd say that this is the African rainforest, where the average yeah, tree is about 100 There's a whole thing of samurai tall. Jack Tips had to be Jack from my basketball team. Yeah, yeah, strong uh, enough to we burst like a god. He survived so like several that. exploding mm. missiles with his friend, the Scotsman. Hmm. Why does he look so familiar? Well, I like him. With so <laughs> much talent, it was only a matter of time until Jack found his way home and defeated Aku once and for all. Ooh. But it took a lot longer than it probably should have. Fifty years, in fact. Yeah, good thing time travel makes you stop aging for some reason. But Jack's a good-hearted soul, like a Boy Scout who hasn't discovered Twitter yet. He can be pretty gullible when it comes to more devious opponents. Also, he continues to prolong his lonely journey over and over, just because he frequently puts the needs of others before his own. Still, the forces of evil should watch out. That's Samurai right. Jack. Ah. <laughs> The two sacred headbands are as many as the men who died in their pursuit. What's so special about some strips of head cloth? Legend says they were created by the gods, or they can grant the wearer supernatural powers. But in truth, the headbands only bring pain and loss. Such was the case with Afro Samurai. Ooh, that animation. Oh, wait, did his parents really call him Afro? Talk about setting big expectations. Well, no, it's a nickname, but even if they did, have you seen his dad? So his name I also is now. Yeah, yeah just look at it. Oh, hey look, he's got the number one headband. Here's how this works. The person who wears the number one headband is said to rule the world. And the only person who can challenge the number one is whoever possesses the number two. In contrast, anybody can challenge the owner of the number two for the right to wear that headband, and thus gain the right to challenge the number one. So, like, you just one work one your way up ranking. so that only one guy in the world can challenge you? So where do I get one of these headbands? Then no one will mess with me. Actually, the opposite would probably happen, which young Afro witnessed firsthand when some freak named Justice showed up with the number two and killed his father right in front of him. Why does this always happen? You know, I always thought parenting was the hardest thing about being a dad, but at this point, I think it's, it's actually, actually so brutal. staying alive. Yeah, that was one thing about Afro Samurai that was supposed to be really Or just brutal. sticking around for them. Despite knowing that he was effectively creating a future challenger, Justice left Afro alone to mourn his loss. So, of course, Afro swore revenge and started learning swordsmanship under a swordmaster named... Swordmaster! <laughs> what the hell is naming these people? <laughs> Through Swordmaster's training of sword mastery, Afro learned the traditional samurai fighting styles of Kenjutsu and Kendo. Kenjutsu is all about how to kill an opponent as fast as possible, while Kendo is more about discipline and being zen and stuff. Naturally, Afro preferred the more kick-ass one. 
right. The Swordmaster's goal was to refine Afro's body and mind, instilling upon him a sense of honor, or Bushido. But that didn't quite mesh with Afro's thirst for vengeance. So when he found out that Swordmaster had the number two headband all along, he knew what he had to do. And now he can take down the guy who killed his dad. Alongside his new friend, slash burden, Ninja Ninja. Oh, come the f*** on! Where'd this guy come from? Now, don't we look like shit? How you been, man? Well, it's this not entirely clear. He's there, but at the same time, not there. Ninja Ninja is believed to be the guardian of the number two headband. But all he ever really does is talk, talk, and talk some more. We got arrows and grenades and shit! You ain't got a chance, dude! <laughs> Though it's also possible Ninja Ninja is simply a figment of Afro's mind, brought about by psychological stress. You know, I have an imaginary friend. Aren't you a little old for that? Not for Al Gundy! He's a gun who also talks to me. He tells me to do stuff. Okay. Anyway, to be honest, calling Afro a samurai is a bit misleading. He's actually more akin to a ronin, a samurai with no master. And mm -hmm. so, with his swordsmanship perfected, Afro wandered the world searching for justice, carrying an arsenal fit for revenge. Including his father's sword. This super long blade has lasted through decades of battle without much issue. Perfect for kicking some ass. He also has a steel cone, which can be a surprisingly effective offensive and defensive tool. And since he doesn't care about that honor BS, he's not afraid to play dirty by attacking with his sandals. But while on the road to justice, Afro's number two headband attracted all manner of dangerous enemies. Luckily, he's more than capable of dealing with each and every one of them. He's strong enough to cut other swords in half, throw his sheet flying. through another guy's throat, Jeez. and even tear off metal arms. Pretty impressive, as many modern metals have tensile strength as high as 80,000 pounds per square inch. Afro is fast enough to cut bullets out of thin air, and even a laser beam. I should note that it's not a plasma-based beam. It bounces off reflective surfaces, doesn't explode upon contact, and it's literally labeled a laser. This means Afro blocked a beam that moved as fast as light, more than 670 million miles per hour. Get this, that laser beam came from a robot version of Afro. Talk about metal! This Afro droid could easily smash up a car, and our boy Afro just tore it apart! He survived getting hit by rockets, including this RPG that fragmented a giant cliff face! <laughs> RPG in a motherfucking <laughs> I think I smell math coming! This tree nearby is most likely a Japanese mountain ash, which can sometimes grow as high as 30 feet. With that in mind, we compared its height to the fragmentation created by the explosion, and compared the resulting surface area to the sheer force or granite. With this, we deduce the RPG's highest possible explosive yield must be around 72 tons of TNT. That is strong. Damn, what kind of mega rocket launcher yeah. are these guys packing? Where do I get I don't know, it's kind of challenging. I know. Both of them are fast as light. <laughs> by the end, he cut down justice, took his revenge in hand, and proved to the world that Afro Samurai is number one. Why you gotta kill all my men? Why you gotta kill me? Nothing personal. It's just revenge. Alright, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, looking at these swords makes me want to sharpen my knives for my Blue Apron meal tonight. Uh, By now, yes. you've probably heard of Blue Apron, the leading meal yes. kit delivery service in the U.S. But did you know about all the different kinds of delicious foods you can make? Like the honey chipotle? All right, Jesus, it was like, not coming whenever it went in, it would disappear. Uh, well, I, mm -hmm. yeah, actually, don't, don't skip. I was going to go back. But, uh, but yeah, it was, what do you guys I think? Know, they, it feels very much that they're trying to equalize them. I'm, I'm probably gonna go with uh, Samurai Jack though. Ah, just Ooh. based on how the series plays out, it's, it's literally about a guy versing almost a god. He has to become strong enough That's to beat true. almost a god. That's true. Ah. If you had a, sense. a demon, technically. So it's like, and the other one is a guy just versing someone unhumanly that's really strong too. Yeah. Maybe Both I don't know. It, it's a thing. Uh, thing that's why so faster than light? Because they're Jack both can, as fast. Jack can 
speed is uh, 70% the speed of light, while well, his is apparently, he had to be at speed of light. Well, the difference was, one, he dodged it, the other one just reacted to stop it. To... The other one's really strong mm -hmm. when it comes to... But, but Samurai, Samurai Jack, Jack can... literally had to dodge. Samurai Jack, Samurai Jack uh, survived the fall. Yeah, he's also high. stayed a lot more he durability. Jump high. durability wise. I yeah. think Samurai Jack. You saw him better. jump. Yeah. I I don't know. I would say yeah. for for All me. Alright, so let's go down. Yeah. So I said Jack. I already said that. I got him. Michael. There's a lot of different things to me that they just Jack is yeah, strong. Yeah. So are you gonna go, Tristan? I'll go for Jack. Uh are you gonna go with switch? <laughs> it's funny that they both don't know, like we don't know their real names. I just yeah, I'll go for it. Afro then, just because. Right. Just to make a, it just is. Right. But yeah, okay. But yeah, Jane. it's just funny to me. All right, go back a bit. So it's... Oh wait. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we're gonna. So it's Jack, Afro, Jack. Okay, so we're gonna get into. It. Who wins? Duh. Oh, I think they're both skilled. Is it 3D? I feel like Samurai Jack would be the easy one to draw in 2D. Well, yeah. Sam Samurai? But if like, Afro Samurai and, like, they kind of didn't. Yeah. Oh, they got him. Right. That number one head. Your sword smells of blood. So does yours.
which means his top velocity was approximately 37,000 miles per hour. Adding the spacesuit's weight to his own, this means his impact force must have equaled about 19 megatons of force. He's Way more than anything after a survive. And then he just got up and walked away. <laughs> In the end, Jack was he just too arm. fast, too strong, too tough, and too well trained for Afro 2. <laughs> Handle. The winner is Samurai Jack. Yeah, I kind of expected that. Thanks for watching. If you guys want exclusive commentary on the episode, just click that little box right over there. And oh, I wonder who's next episode, fighting. Get it by clicking oh. the link in the description. Oh, because oh. it's not like we do. No, we're not just going to watch that one next. But... Carnage versus Luke's Elfenlein. Yeah, Elfenlein was not a very good Awesome. So, I'm not too big on gore. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. read the manga because I didn't want to watch the anime. True. Yeah. Well, obviously, honestly, I didn't even. Believe, I didn't really believe after that much. I just did it because he wants to be different. Uh. Oh, just that. Yeah. Obviously, there's probably pretty much nothing to say. Yeah, he's just a tear book. Afro Sarah, which is the fun joke. Afro is good as a regular fighter, but this man, not yeah. Jack, is Jack is supposed to gods. He's, he's supposed to face like a demon that's like godlike and stuff. So like, yeah, there's no way. So it feels like it's pretty understandable that Jack would find a way. I don't know, it kind yeah. of felt very lackluster though. Yeah. And honestly, I didn't, I didn't really enjoy the animation. Yeah, the animation. They should have worked on a little bit more. Which, who knows, maybe they keep drawing, like, because that's what happened with yeah. the, the 3D and the animation. Yeah, that it got better after, it's just, it's, it's practice, takes time, it's just it's kind of sad when ones that you want to watch that are good have to take the fall back yeah. on them practicing that yeah. kind of stuff. But yeah, but, uh, it, the, just, the, I don't know, just the whole thing kind of felt slightly lackluster to me. Like, yeah. to me. But it was still slightly enjoyable. Very too, so. enjoyable! But yeah. we're gonna probably try watching the next one. So. Well. Alright, with that said, if you liked this video, don't forget to leave a like. Comment down below any series of videos you want to watch. And don't forget to subscribe. That's it. See ya. See ya.